So the other thing I had to bitch about was was Jerry the King Lawler. You had the fans. Seth's out there saying, uh, yeah, I'm going to support Raw and go Raw. I love NXT, but Raw is the brand I'm with now. And all the fans chant NXT at him and then boo him when he when he says he's going to kick Walter's ass. Um, and then during the match, the fans start chanting for KO and King Lawler starts keeps keep going. Oh, these fans are so finicky every time. I'm like, they're not finicky. It's your guys's job to make them like who they like and not like who they like. This is like the you know b- the Bizarro Land comment from Michael Cole. Yeah, like it's not Bizarro Land, and it's it not like complete... they can hear the commentary and what Jerry Lawler's saying. So it's complete goddamn sense why they like people and why they don't like people. It's because of your freaking booking. Yeah, and how and then the perception of these people. It's you're booking Seth Rollins like a goon. He's making an ass of himself on social media. Of course they're turning on him. Of course they love KO because he right now he's a, a baby face you haven't screwed up yet. Of course they love Walter because he's a badass. He's been built as a badass and kept like a badass and has had one of the best matches of the year over at NXT UK. Of course they're going to cheer him. NXT looks like the up-and-coming underdogs that are badasses that are taking over SmackDown and, and raging against the establishment. They look like the modern DX. Of course people are going are gonna to cheer for them. It's not bizarro land. It's not finicky. It's booking. It's logic. Come on. Yeah. It's that. It's and it, that's it's that kind of uh, ex, like trying to excuse their own shitty booking, uh, and that mentality of it's not us, it's the fans' problem. Like, look, there's problems with the fans. Don't get me wrong. There's a there's a small part of the wrestling community that's very toxic, and they overshine a lot of the the cool great people that are part of this community. But let's also call a spade a spade. It's your job to make us like the characters we're supposed to like and hate the characters we're supposed to hate. That's literally your job. If this were a, sh- a TV show, another TV show, and you were, you know, if this, let's, we always say Game of Thrones, but let's find another one. Um, uh, okay, let's use Game of Thrones. Screw it. All right. If we if we suddenly hate Jon Snow because of the things you have him do on the show. That's not our fault for hating Jon Snow. That's your fault. It's how you wrote it. It's how you wrote it. If Daenerys Targaryen becomes a psycho because you wrote her to be a psycho, we're going to turn on you and say you did a, that was dumb writing. Yeah. It's exactly what happened with the final season of Game of Thrones. People turn on the writers because they wrote a stupid show. You spent 10 years telling us Danny was the chosen one. We're not fickle. We're not <laughs> fickle because we suddenly turned on Danny. You screwed up. You know what I mean? Like, oh, I'm sorry. Suddenly I like well, let's let's say that uh, you know, in Star like okay, Star Wars. All of a sudden Luke is a bitter, grumpy old man on an island, and I hate it. That's not my fault for suddenly turning on I don't hate Luke because I hate Luke because he's a bad actor or a bad character. I hate it because you screwed up. <sighs> <laughs> you made him a bad character. Come on, King. Uh, but, L- listen, was, I have a lot of controversy with what's going on at the commentary desk right now, too. I, I don't like I, you know who I the have first mad- character who was the who was the first character who was a big character on The Simpsons was Bart Simpson, and you know why people are, why Bart Simpson is no longer the focus of The Simpsons because people turned on him because he wasn't interesting. Who do you think of when you think of The Simpsons now? Dumb! Homer. Yep. Because everyone realized he was more interesting, and they pivoted the whole show to be about Homer, uh, not Bart. South Park. That's smart writing. This entire season of South Park has been about Randy Marsh, and it has been Randy for Marsh. seasons. Randy Marsh. It was now. about the pivoted. kids. Yep. They realize Randy's an interesting character. They pivoted it to be about Randy. That's smart writing. Yep. Not they keep pushing people that aren't getting over. They don't know how to get people over. Okay. Let's end this rant. As you said, Nick, we have a lot more to get to. I'm sorry. Please continue. Yeah. No, the commentary. <laughs> listen, I, I think Vic Joseph, Good Lord. Vic Joseph is fantastic as a, as a uh, center seat caller. I, I really enjoy his stuff. Uh, I enjoyed him in 205. I enjoyed him in NXT UK. So I think Dio is green as hell. I'm not enjoying him being up there, uh, and God, you gotta love Lawler for for the legacy of it. Much like a lot of people have mad nostalgia respect for Jr. over in AEW, which we didn't really talk about the commentary in AEW, but I have a lot to say about that. But maybe we'll another time. Um, yeah, it, it, some of the same things are happening, and there's a lot of speculation around whether it's our nostalgia is not letting us move forward with, with commentary. And, and again, I don't know whether it's our nostalgia or what they think we want to hear. And we also don't know if it's Lawler or if it's, you know, the old crabby man in the back screaming in his ear. Fair enough. Call, Fair him, call him fickle. Call yeah. him fickle. Damn it. <laughs> you know, like that, what that was, 
this was Daniel Bryan's heel line. Is these you, you guys are all fickle. That's a heel line. That's coming at the crowd and making them hate you. Now they're trying to pass it off as, you know, the logic, of, you know, trying to get everyone who's watching the show on the same page and telling the the TV viewer what to think. Yeah. Oh, it's that's that's the maddening thing for me. All right. 